This video is about the places that you must go to in New Zealand. Having been to New Zealand every year since 2011, there are little to none places that I would say you shouldn't visit. Every place I've been to has been incredible and unique in its own way. So to come up with this list, I'm basing this on the places that I've returned to multiple times and ones that I would continue to visit for years to come. These are the places that I tell people to go to who are visiting for the first time. This is a quick overview. In the future, I plan on making in-depth videos for each of the places, giving you rates, telling you where to stay, what activities to do, places to eat, all that great info that helps you plan a trip. But for now, here's a taste of the places. Before I begin with the ones that I've been to multiple times, I want to add in two places that I've only been once, but plan to go back because they left such an impact on me. The first is Akaroa. Akaroa is an hour and a half drive from Christchurch. The historical French settlement is surrounded by natural wonders, including the harbor, where rare Hector dolphins swim. This is the place where you'll want to pick a nice spot on the water in one of the cafes or restaurants and just enjoy the beautiful view. We found a cute pub where we got to have a fantastic mulled wine and I spent a few hours there writing. One thing to note, my brother and I thought we'd go out on our last night there. We were going to go to a pub and we were going to find a nice fireplace and have a drink. We left it around like 9, 10pm and we realized that nothing in town is open past 9pm. The next place is Kaikoura. Now, just a disclosure, I only spent one full day in Kaikoura, and that was doing a dolphin encounter, which was life-changing, and I have talked about that in another video. So, the reason why you're seeing dolphins now is because I didn't actually film anything else. So, excuse me for the dolphins as I talk about this. Here in Sydney, I love the ocean and all the wildlife that that includes. Kaikoura is a coastal town on the South Island and is known for its abundant wildlife. It also has gorgeous views of the Kaikoura Ranges, which are two parallel ranges of mountains. If you know me, I'm mountain obsessed, so having the ocean and snow-capped peaks all in one area is my dream. For the rest of the videos, you will be seeing places I've visited multiple times and intend to continue visiting. Wellington, the capital of New Zealand. It sits near the North Island's southernmost point on the Cook Strait. It's a compact city that has beaches, a harbor, an iconic red cable car that takes you up to the botanical gardens. There are numerous museums and great places to eat and shop. Besides doing all the Lord of the Rings tours in the area, because I am such a big Lord of the Rings fan, I think the botanical gardens is my favorite thing to do. I just find it so peaceful. I just love going up there and relaxing. Glenorchy. Glenorchy is 45 minutes from Queenstown, set against a background of native beech forests and towering mountain ranges. Glenorchy's surrounds are nothing short of awe-inspiring. It's also where a lot of scenes from Lord of the Rings was filmed, so enough said. If you only have half a day, I would go to Glenarchy just for the drive. It's one of my favorite drives in New Zealand. I can't emphasize enough how stunning it is. There are plenty of activities to do in the area. There are jet boating, kayaking, horseback riding, so many hikes, but I tend to drive down, bring lunch, and just do the Glenarchy Lagoon boardwalk. It's such a beautiful, peaceful walk. Omaru. Explore this heritage in the Victorian precinct, where you will find shops, galleries, and traditional crafts within some of the Southern Hemisphere's most complete Victorian streetscapes and 19th century architecture. Omaru has everything and makes this a really interesting stay. They have botanical gardens, steampunk museums, great parks, a train running through the town, distilleries, they've got gluten-free beer which I can drink which is awesome, there are penguins, lots of wildlife, there's so much to see and do. Rotorua is actually one of the places that really surprised me. Before going I didn't actually know much about it except that it smells like sulfur. And that's not a lie, it does smell. Uh, you kind of get used to the smell or you can avoid it in places. But Rotorua has so many things to do. I've been to Rotorua multiple times and I still haven't done everything. The town itself has so much to do. You've got Lake Rotorua, which is right there, which is really beautiful, easy to walk around. You've got government gardens. There's geothermal activity happening right there. They have really nice markets to visit. What I find unique about Rotorua is the redwoods. This is one of my favorite parts. I love walking through the redwoods. There's over 5,600 hectares of this forest, which you can explore. If you love the outdoors and want to experience nature at its best, this area is definitely for you. But if you don't want to go for a big walk, what is also great is they have a treetop walk. 
The series of swinging bridges takes you through the redwoods. You have the opportunity to do day or night. I've done both and they're both incredible. Other activities include luge and gondola, walking around or swimming in Blue Lake, going to kerosene creek or hot and cold pools. Whenever I go, I spend three to five nights there and I still haven't done everything. So there's so much to do. Lake Tekapo. I'm gonna put it out there and say Lake Tekapo is the place I find most stunning and is up there with the places that I have spent the most time in New Zealand. It's a tiny town with a remarkable turquoise colored lake surrounded by the mighty Southern Alps. This is the place where I go when I need to relax and find my inner peace. There are some beautiful walks, hot springs, ice skating, horseback riding. You can get on the lake on a boat or kayak. There's a ski field. It has the iconic Good Shepherd Church and stars unlike anything you have ever seen. Also, it has one of my favorite restaurants in New Zealand. But I'll save that for another video. Queenstown. Queenstown and Lake Tekapo are my go-to places in New Zealand. I go every year. They feel like home. Queenstown is the adrenaline capital. You go there to bungee, you go there to ski. There's dozens of activities that are must-dos. That's for another video. Why I go to Queenstown every year? It's really small but a lively town. It's easy to hire a car, the airport is close. I get nervous traveling alone, but I'll just drop into Queenstown for a week by myself. It feels safe, it's great to meet new people, it's a great place to eat and drink, there are many superb places to eat gluten-free since I'm celiac, and that in itself will always bring me back. I love getting a coffee in the morning and walking around the botanical gardens, and getting taco medic for lunch, and getting ferg for dinner and sitting on perkies watching the sunset. <sighs> I'm just thinking about food right now. <laughs> I really miss that. <laughs> Queenstown is also a great base to do day trips, like Moak Lake, Bob's Cove, Glenarchy, and Milford Sound. The last place on my list is Mount Cook. Now Queenstown probably should be my number one on this list. It's the place I've been to the most in terms of staying the longest, but Mount Cook is unique in the fact that I've been there every year since 2011. It's a day trip from Lake Tekapo with several walks you can do from the Mount Cook Village. The one I've walked the most is the Hooker Valley Track. It's my favorite walk in New Zealand and one I will definitely do a separate video for. Why I love Mount Cook? It's in the mountains and because of that, you never know what you're gonna experience. I've done this walk on sunny days. I've done it in torrential rain, crazy wind, snow, I've seen the lake frozen, I've been at sunrise and sunset, and it's never once looked the same. And that's the beauty of being within the mountains and why I love it so much. So there you go, my top places that you must visit when you travel to New Zealand. As I said before, I'm excited to do an in-depth look at all these places, as I know when I'm traveling, I search hundreds of videos to give me an idea of what people have experienced themselves. Until then, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.